Hi, everyone. We're speaking with Hunter Scharf from Alsat Capital. This is a unique AI company that's a mixture of internet infrastructure, but also providing you know growth and uh, empowering a lot of potential in Canadian companies in particular, providing them with NVIDIA H100 chips. So this is a great balance of cash flow, uh, good profit margins, but also they're able to get uh, a good leverage off of providing these services to people. Let's get in and talk to Hunter and talk more about this company. Hunter, it's great to uh, finally meet you here on, on camera. Great news today. Uh, I want you to you know walk us through it, uh, but also just maybe after, after that too, just give us the overall about what else that's about, uh, because I think people are are missing some of the story here because what you've done with the last few deals and especially today has really opened up uh, a lot of blue sky. Thanks a lot for having me, Andrew. I, I think I need to start with you know describing what Allset is, and and Allset is really a investment vehicle that gives investors exposure to artificial intelligence infrastructure. And what I always say is that building AI products is really about three things. It's about having access to huge amounts of data, extremely talented engineers, and then the third pillar is having access to computing power. And really what Allset is all about is building a AI infrastructure behemoth that is vertically integrated and gives investors exposure to a bunch of different value propositions within that thesis. And so what you saw today in the news is that uh, one of the critical pieces of our business is giving companies access to cloud compute GPUs. Uh, it's absolutely critical for artificial intelligence. And so the deal that we announced today was a 200 GPU uh, H100 server project uh, where we partnered with a company called SETI, where they essentially have, uh, where we've provided them with the access to up to 200 H100s um, um, for the foreseeable future, which they hope to use to build out AI products and services for their, uh, for their customers in the future. So we hope to sign you know, deals like this. That revenue uh, for us, at full capacity is $90 million or just over that. Um, obviously that's a big number, but it, it is achievable when you're working in a space that's this size. And so we hope that they will exercise that full option to get to the full $90 million in the foreseeable future. We're, we're just very excited to be playing in this space at that scale. Yeah, to, 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 to ink the deal with that upside is, is pretty huge. And if you if people haven't noticed that they'll see like Elon Musk in his deal with uh, that was supposed to go to Tesla were the uh, H100s where he diverted essentially what was supposed to go to Tesla those chips to XAI. Now that's a fun conversation in and of itself, but it shows just how critical these chips are. I mean they're they've moved that stock to a three trillion dollar company, Nvidia. And you see someone like that who realizes this is important for me to do anything in the space of AI. Yeah, I mean, look, both from an investment perspective and on the ground at a business level, this space is just on fire. I mean, the amount of attention, liquidity, uh, excitement around the space is 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 quite remarkable. And, you know, it, at Tesla and, and other related Elon Musk companies, there's obviously a little bit of a family inviting, let's call it, within <laughs> that portfolio. But the reality is big companies like that are, are buying so many of these GPUs that they're at the front of the line to get access to them. And so that's actually funny enough where one of Allset's uh, portfolio companies comes in is providing access to smaller companies that don't get access to the front of the line of these GPUs. And it's so critical to get access to this infrastructure. And so, you know, we, we just want to provide shareholders with exposure to that type of value proposition. And this being like the third deal you put together in pretty quick succession is showing that your, uh, your model's working. Uh, and, you know, if it keeps a building, you're going to be a behemoth. But it's so it's so important to have that because who else? I mean, you can't all just go to Google or Amazon and not only that uh, can afford to all of these mid tier, small to mid tier, any player who says, listen, I think I've got an idea that I want to work on a, on an AI model for this, for that. They can't go get an H100 chip or GPU themselves. So what do they do? They, there has to be some sort of service provider in the middle to provide that. Yeah, I mean, look at it this way. Um, we we like, all said is is has exposure across a variety of different value propositions within AI infrastructure, and so we like to think of ourselves as almost a mini boot camp for early stage companies in AI that need exposure to a variety of different things. They need data management services. They need GPU cloud compute. They need advisory. They need all these different things. And we are essentially a platform from that perspective to provide that value 
proposition to them. And, you know, if anybody or any of your listen, listeners um, ever watched the All In podcast, there was a discussion that they had a, a few months ago where they said, if you had a big pool of capital yourself right now, what would you do? And one of the big answers, I believe it was David Sachs that said it was, he, he basically said, I would buy tons of GPUs from NVIDIA. And I would basically have access to all this compute. And then I would have early stage venture companies come to me. I would get equity in their businesses <laughs> and we would build those companies together. Because as I said, if you come with the people and the data, you need access to the compute as the third pillar, and then you can build companies from there. And so that's where all set, you know, hopes hopefully is going. Well, that's the smarter, I would say, I mean, I, I guess the more creative and fun and, and, out there kind of worldly ideas what G, uh, generative AI can do that's exciting and that's wonderful but just sheer cash flow and, and money power being in that infrastructure side is so critical and it's such a sweet spot right now because it gives you lift like you said to uh, to all sorts of ideas that you can you know help along the way but you have that steady backbone of we are we've got a good you know stranglehold of the infrastructure side uh, here in Canada. Definitely. And and Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, was in town not too long ago in Canada. And he said that Canada is the country with the largest pool of AI talent with the least access to computing power on the AI side. And so there's the biggest discrepancy in his view between those two factors. Uh, that just screams opportunity for, for companies like Allset, in my view. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, Waterloo has got such a depth of, of talent uh, amongst other areas, but he's also just such an interesting person too, because I like to weave in NVIDIA in there as well, because he was talking about Taiwanese semiconductor and he was saying, you know, uh, they're going to have to start charging us more because their stock is down. Now, I've never seen a, a and they're not a competitor, but they, you know, they they use uh, T, TMIC's uh, soft, uh, or sorry, uh, hardware. I've never seen another person come out and say, yeah, you need to start charging us more. But I thought that was a great kind of... Uh, uh, it was a good nod on his behalf because he knows what he's got uh, in these GPUs. Well, it's re it's reminiscent of uh, in, uh, uh, Elon Musk saying his stock price is too high in 2021. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and for anyone who is wondering too, the 10 to 1 split is done there as well. So if you're looking at your uh, your stock chart, you're going, oh my God, NVIDIA is at 120. Don't worry. You're you're okay. <laughs> but <laughs> But I mean, people, I mean, for a longer story, but people will want to know, how did you get the relationships you have? Uh, now, that's probably too big a story, but the amount of work preceding you guys going public to where you are today to have gotten those relationships, to even get access to this uh, is pretty incredible. And that's part of, I guess, a bigger story as to who you are, how you got here, um, to be able to fill that void that is, is is expanding rapidly. Yeah, I can answer that pretty quickly, okay. actually. Um, in, in the U.S., or rather in North America, a, a company called Supermicro, which some of your uh, listeners might have heard of, it's a public company, uh, they assemble about 95% of H100s in North America. And so NVIDIA really just designs the GPU. There's eight GPUs that go into each H100 server. And there's all these different components, the cooling system, the motherboard, the CPU, Supermicro is essentially the final assembler of that server, and they're they have a monopoly in in North America in that business. Um, and and so really, what you need to do as a cloud compute provider in North America is you need to get access to Supermicro. And so our um, our portfolio company Cedar Cross has really spent the time and has you know through all set gotten the capital to build the relationships with a company called Earthmade Computing which is a distributor of Supermicro verified distributor and so our relationships in California built directly uh, are absolutely critical for you know the customers that we uh, bring to the table because that's how we get access to the GPUs and it's a fundamental element of the business. I mean, it's it's incredible to have that relationship, and I'm going to ask this because this, and I'm being facetious a little bit because uh, this has been such a great news release. But uh, does that mean you'll get uh, uh, you know a head start on the Blackwell GPUs that are coming out in 2025? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I actually personally went to the Nvidia GTC conference in San Jose in March. Uh, it was a remarkable thing to watch. It was very Steve Jobs esque uh, when when Jensen unveiled the B100. Uh, what, what gets really interesting is that this GPU business is going to continue to iterate. 
there's the H200 coming out, then there's the B100, then the B200. So, you know, for us, it's always about making sure that the value proposition continues to stay current for the customers that we hope to bring in. And so hopefully with our relationships with Supermicro or rather with EarthMade, which gives us access to Supermicro GPUs, um, 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 continues to deliver as it has already uh, in getting us access to GPUs. That's the bottom line. Uh, and, it, and once again, with the three deals you've done, that's a lot of revenue, uh, which maybe that's what's scaring off some people is that they're not used to a, a, like a, a tech story, a tech company that actually has revenue. <laughs> some people are confused by that. Yeah, I mean, we we're we're super proud of 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 our portfolio and and what's been delivered to date. Um, you know, I I think I think there's so much growth opportunity in this space, and particularly as we were speaking about earlier in Canada, uh, there is a unique market dynamic even within a global uniquely dark, uh, market dynamic that's that delivers a huge amount of opportunity. Uh, it's you know it's our responsibility to go find uh, to find access to that opportunity for the shareholders of Allset. And I like how this this uh, this uh, third party deal it has they can scale up to that uh, ninety one million revenue kind of. Do you is there any is there a time limit like do do you know like maybe in the summer if they kind of give you the nod and go yeah we need it more or is it like for a, a year option two year option or or is it just indefinite that they have up till. We're not going to give them to the end of time to get these GPUs. <laughs> yeah. my, my view is uh, sooner the better. Obviously, I think everybody would agree. Um, but you know, we're not holding their feet to the fire quite yet. We want to be value add partners. So now, as you had mentioned, like there is a depth of talent here. Uh, and sometimes that doesn't translate into the equity market. Uh, I mean, you know, Canada is a little bit strange, but th no one would, uh, dispute the huge brain power we've got. You walk us through, you know, that, that kind of equity side, uh, and maybe that is a reflection to what the stock's doing because people aren't understanding the story or they're, they're worried. I don't know what, what, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it comes back to the market dynamics here in Canada. So, and and this is a global phenomenon, and it was what I was speaking to earlier about the All In podcast as well. I think the 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 really exciting thing here is that early stage companies might not necessarily be able to pay the top rate that we can command for the type of GPUs that 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 we have exposure to, and so the type of deals that I would love to start see seeing being signed are are equity for compute projects where um, we get access to the equity in the portfolio companies that we provide a compute to. And in exchange for that, we may give them a slight discount on the computing power that we're providing. But all of a sudden, you've got this basket of really call options on a bunch of different exciting AI stories. Um, and you really only need one of those to work for it to be a, a material impact on uh, on 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 the company, and so you know we can't guarantee that any one of those are going to work. But it, at the bottom line, if we can start to sign those kind of projects and uh, and and get exposure to that, I personally get really excited. Well, it's something that I mean, I love that type of model where you've got a, a steady cash flow that you're, you guys are able to generate right now with all these deals, and then a, a possible asymmetric gain because it's. Uh, if if you're able to get some equity in some of these deals, I mean that those can go through the roof. And even if seven or eight of them fail, it, it, one of them it, it it changes the 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 scenario entirely. It's a, it's an exciting proposition, definitely. Yeah. And that's what makes this, I mean, such a unique uh, company and and platform in of itself. The relationships all coming together, and I think when people really put that together, the fact that you're able to make these deals to provide this to you know a brain pool. Uh, and then in the, once you can then leverage that, uh, it I think people are going to start to see where where the the big upside is here. Never mind the fact that for a twenty million dollar market cap, the amount of deals you guys have done already. I mean, it's it's it is shocking, especially in this challenging market in Canada in, in a challenging economy. We think we built an exciting value proposition. That's what I'll say. So what's the what's the size and scope that you guys can get to? I mean, you've got to, this one deal that can go up to ninety one million. If someone turned around tomorrow and said, "Hey," uh, we would like that deal. Yeah. It, it, well, the answer is that these GPUs uh, are, are in extremely high demand. And so, uh, and that's not just me saying that this is just a market dynamic that's out there right now with NVIDIA. Uh, and that's why they become a $3 trillion company. Um, and so, you know, I can't guarantee, I don't think anyone can guarantee as you get up to those bigger sizes that they're going to be available right away. I mean, sort of the value proposition that we've been able to signal is that the delivery timeline is a huge 
element of being in the GPU providing business. Um, you know, anybody can go and order, if you have $90 million to go buy GPUs, someone will get it for you, but it might not be in a month. It might be in six months or nine months. And so time market is obviously a critical element of uh, being in such a fast moving, moving technology industry. Uh, so I, I think that's, that that's probably part of, and, and is primary, primary element of the value proposition. Now, as part of this too, is that like a, uh, in some way a consulting type of thing? Cause as you were kind of mentioning, there'll be, uh, you know, uh, stronger versions and different versions of the, the ones, never mind the Blackwell. If someone says, well, I don't need quite a Blackwell cause it's that powerful. Uh, I need something else. Like you'll be able to, to go across a broad spectrum of project, uh, you know, uh, products over time and be able to scale something specifically to each kind of project partner. That's kind of what the, the, the plan would be. Yeah, it's an important question, Andrew. I mean, if you look at a, a one of the larger GPU hyperscalers in the US, CoreWeave, you, you, anyone can go onto their website and see their pricing. What gets interesting to me is that even the previous version to the H100, the A100, is still one of their best selling and, and, and most highly marketed products on their website. And so there's still lots of demand depending on what you're working on and 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 what size and scale and pricing you're looking for. If you're if you're an artificial intelligence or machine learning company, there the, these machines are 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 very vast in terms of what they can uh, provide. And so you know even older versions of these machines are still continued to use this to this day. Well, listen, this is a real pleasure talking to you. I, like the amount of news flow you've had out uh, is is pretty spectacular and. Uh, uh, certainly, I'm I, as a shareholder as well. I'm pretty ex excited about what you guys have developed and what you're doing. Uh, if you can maintain this pace, that's that would be wonderful. Uh, and once again, regardless of where, where a stock price is, is when we look at uh, companies, uh, sometimes it's reflected in the stock price, sometimes it's not, and we're happy when it isn't because that means we've got something that. Uh, that's hitting milestones, doing all the things they should be doing and said they'd be doing. Uh, and this is certainly one of those cases where you're hitting uh, a lot of home runs. And uh, you, you know, we're grateful for that because the stock is at a great price for those to to want to build along with you. Well, hopefully these are just singles and doubles and the home runs are yet to come. Perfect. Thanks so much. It was great speaking with you, Hunter. And I look forward to uh, whatever else comes in the near future. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me on.